Welcome to Conversations with Dr. Skip Mason. Pastor, preacher, historian, author, teacher, librarian, archivist, world traveler, collector, family historian, avid reader, and creator of the popular Vanishing Black Atlanta Facebook page. But a lot of folks who love history. Most, Most importantly, he's our, he's our dad who loves his family and who taught us the importance of our history and having important conversations. Join him now for this episode of Conversations with Dr. Skip. Well, good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. Good Sunday afternoon. I am so excited and so delighted to be with you today uh, to share uh, with uh, an amazing group of women uh, who are leaders of their respective sororities uh, who are going to come and to share with us today a little bit about some amazing women from the CME Church who were a part of their organization, still is a part of the organization, uh, and who led uh, tremendously during the time that they serve. I am Skip Mason, pastor of the West Mitchell Street CME Church in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and host of CME 150 Facebook Live Conversation. And so I greet you in the wonderful and marvelous name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I trust and pray that you had a great worship experience this morning uh, and that you've had a chance to get a little to eat uh, and that now you are ready to hear this great conversation today. Let me first of all acknowledge and greet our senior Bishop Lawrence L. Reddick III and Mrs. Wendy Jones Reddick, the chair of the College of Bishops, Bishop Kenneth Wayne Carter and Mrs. Rosia Carter, our distinguished, uh, our distinguished College of Bishops, excuse me, and their spouses. Uh, and let me also uh, greet uh, Bishop James Walker, uh, who is the chair of the CIT committee, Mrs. Dolores Walker and my bishop, Bishop Thomas Lewis Brown Sr. and Dr. Louise Baker Brown. He's also the co-chair. Uh, and let me thank Dr. Teresa Duhar for all the work that she continues to do to support our beloved church. And so today we are going to uh, look at uh, Greek organizations and sororities, especially today, uh, and the role that they play and have played uh, in the development of this world and the great contribution of leaders uh, that they have given us, uh, including many of our bishops uh, who are members and were members of the Divine Nine and one very special one that you will see uh, very shortly. It is not uncommon uh, for the church and the Greek letter community, fraternities and sororities to have a relationship uh, together. Uh, we know that uh, at our general conferences, as I had to dig deep to pull up photos, whenever there's a general conference, you can always count on the sororities and the fraternities gathering together for the annual picture, as we see here with the, the uh, AKAs and, of course, the, the Deltas have gathered and Phi Beta Sigma and Zeta Phi Beta uh, together. Uh, we have Sigma Gamma Rho uh, sorority. Uh, they were here at West Mitchell Street CME Church. And, and as many of you pastors know that they have their Founders Day services, they do uh, service projects uh, as well. Uh, and so wherever you see them, whether we're at a conference or uh, at a unity summer, we're gonna always gather and take a picture as I did with my brothers uh, some years ago. and. Uh, again, the Deltas, and I had to throw the campus in, Reverend Reginald Barnes, the pastor of Brown Memorial CME Church, uh, President Maud Brown Porter's Church, and of course, the Omega. So I, I think I got everybody, with the exception of Iota Phi Theta, uh, and I just could not find a picture of them at the CME Church, but I'm going to continue uh, to dig deep. But Greek letter organizations have been very much a part of our organization. Some of our bishops, as I mentioned, are members, bishop spouses. It's nothing to look on Facebook and see these two all wrapped up and draped up in uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha. Of course, Barbara Campbell, uh, our president of our Connectional Lay Council and our international president of the missionaries, Sister Jacqueline Scott, also an AKA. So we know the role that these organizations and the pride that 
we have uh, with them today. But today we're going to uh, be blessed with the presence of these uh, dynamic women who are going to come and share a little bit about our member who have served, but also tell us a little bit about the work that the organization is doing, particularly during this age of uh, COVID-19, the pandemic. Uh, as uh, President uh, Beverly Smith was telling me earlier, the Delta president, she survived being president under President Trump. So we got some stories to share and we want you to share, hit your share button, and also, uh, if you are a member of the Divine Nine, put that in the chat. Uh, and as I see them come up, I'll try to share uh, some of them. I am excited today to welcome these wonderful leaders uh, and presidents. My brothers and sisters, let us welcome the distinguished presidents of the Divine Eye and our own bishop, presiding prelate of the Fifth Episcopal District. Let me do the honors of introducing each of them uh, today. First, I want to present to you Dr. Glenda Baskin Glover. She is an international. Supreme Basilis of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, and also has the distinction of being the president and CEO of Tennessee State University. We have my dear friend, uh, President Beverly E. Smith, the national president and CEO of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority uh, Incorporated. Uh, just a second. So glad to have President Smith with us. Let me also welcome President Rashida Liberty, the International uh, Grand Basilisk of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority, uh, and the National President of Zeta Phi Beta, uh, Valerie Hollinsworth Baker, will be with us soon. And then, of course, everyone knows this person in our church, the first female elected to the College of Bishops, Bishop Teresa Jefferson Snorton. Uh, and I don't think uh, you need to guess what sorority she is a part of today. Ladies, good evening, good afternoon. We are so happy. I'm happy to have you all with, uh, with me today. And I know that even on a Sunday, Sundays are work days for you. All of them at other obligations that they were working me in between. And I am so grateful uh, to have them to spend a little time uh, with us today. Uh, good evening, ladies. Hey, good evening. Good evening. to have you with us. We're gonna move right into uh, our first uh, honoree, our legacy, uh, Maud Porter Brown, uh, who had the distinction of serving uh, as the seventh uh, international president of Alpha Kappa Alpha uh, Sorority. And let me put her picture up. This is Sister Maul Porter Brown, a distinguished educator as well. And before uh, Dr. Glover comes up to talk, take a look at this. Two years later, on the 15th of January, at historically black Howard University in Washington, D.C., nine co-eds led by Ethel Hedgeman courageously broke with tradition and founded the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, or AKA, the first college sorority started and incorporated by African-American women. Young Miss Hedgeman, who was inspired by her English teacher's accounts of sorority life at Brown University, envisioned a support network for black women with like minds to coalesce their talents and strengths for the mutual uplift and benefit of others. The mission crafted for Alpha Kappa Alpha comprised five basic tenets that have remained unchanged since the sorority's inception more than a century ago. These tenets are to cultivate and encourage high scholastic and ethical standards, promote unity and friendship among college women, study and help alleviate problems concerning young black females in order to improve their social stature, maintain a progressive interest in college life and be of service to all mankind. Since I wanted to share that, Dr. Glover, so glad to have you here with us. 
would you please uh, tell us a little bit about your seventh uh, Supreme Basilisk? Uh, and then I want you to talk a little bit about the work that you've been doing uh, as the uh, International Supreme Basilisk and particularly the work with the HBCUs. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mason. I am so honored to be here today and even more pleased to join this celebration as, as your uh, 150 years of this powerful historical CME church. And I, it's so special to celebrate the women and, and share the information about some of the greatest leaders this country has ever known. I want to also acknowledge the first female bishop, Bishop Teresa Jefferson Snorton. Thank you for allowing God to lead and elevate you to these unbelievable heights. And thank you very much for that. So tell you a little bit about the uh, Ma Brown Porter. I mean, I love this time period in which we find ourselves when more national attention is focused on divine line leaders and four outstanding women of history. So I proudly focus on the seventh international president of Alpha Kappa Alpha. And here's what makes her so great. I mean, she was godly and, and a visionary leader who dreamed of this very day, a day when we would have a very difficult, different conversation right now. One that includes how African-American women are at the pinnacle of excellence. And we can celebrate Sister Marcia Fudge, the new secretary of HUD. She dreamed of this day. Loretta Lynch, who served as attorney general. Asa Taylor Morton, who served as the first treasurer, black treasurer of the United States of America. We honor Kamala Harris, who is now the first vice president of the United States. And this is what she dreamed of. The other founders dreamed of this very day. So now she was a legend in Louisville, Kentucky, the first black to do so many things. I mean, she expanded the YMCA to do more to empower women and eradicate racism. And she was an outstanding educator who just, she was short of stature, but she stood her ground and made sure that certain, certain things happened in the school system. And recall, she was in the early 1930s. I mean, she was at the last president, AKA. I think it was from 1931 to 33. And so at the time of the height of segregation, when racism was rampant and there were just no rights that were respected in an African-American community. So we were under that separate but equal doctrine. We, remember now, Brown, Brown Board of Education didn't come on until like 20 years later. So, but she still found a way to serve. Alpha Cap Alpha was a service organization. And so she was so significant, they named, uh, they renamed Chess. Chestnut Street Methodist Church. They renamed the Brown Memorial Church, CME Church in Louisville, as a tribute to Dr. Brown. And she just, I mean, her, her role in education, her role in politics, her role in, in advancing women's rights. And then she married a CME bishop, uh, Dr. Porter, in 1948. And they became legends in Louisville. So she's just an integral part of Alabama about history, the CME, CME history. So this is more than a celebration for us, for all of the four of us who are here today. It's, it's an acknowledgement, it's a recognition, it's a confession, it's like an admiration of these women, of a spiritual leader in Dr. Brown, a couple that changed Louisville and that changed this country. Oh, that is wonderful. I, I tell you, uh, we so appreciate your sharing this uh, legacy of, of this great woman. Uh, you did mention that she was indeed uh, married uh, to uh, the 17th Bishop of our church, uh, Bishop uh, Henry Porter. And for that, we are very proud. And I know even Bishop Snorton, Jefferson Snorton, who grew up in Kentucky, uh, remember her, uh, or remember hearing about her great accomplishments. So, so Madam President, tell us about Alpha Kappa Alpha during the last, during the tenure uh, as you've served as, as president, you've been very busy. Uh, and I, I think you all have finally uh, somewhat calmed down a little, I guess, now that your sorrow is in the White House. Uh, and so we know that not only did you all celebrate, but that all of the sororities and fraternities celebrated this major accomplishment because she is one of us. You well, know, as a part of the Greek letter movement and HBCUs, Madam President. Yeah, we have a plan, and she's asked us to make sure that we don't just sing out Alpha Kappa Alpha. And so, I've been, as, as I've done these shows, I've tried to make sure I carried out her wishes, and that is to make sure that we include the Divine Nine because we could not have done it, she could not have done it without the entire Divine Nine. 
So we just have agreement among us that we always <laughs> recognize that it was not a, an Alpha Kappa Alpha effort. I mean, we are proud of her as a member of the sorority, absolutely. But we know that it took more than just the 300,000 African, <laughs> Alpha Kappa Alpha women. But now, yes, yeah, we settled down. So I don't think this is such an inspirational moment. There is no settling down. We're so yeah. happy that these four years are behind us that we'll be sitting in the street and dancing, you know, in, in, in the church. We're going to go back to our Pentecostal roots, just dance in the church as much as we can. We're just celebrating. So, but, but we've had to, you know, you asked how we're doing now, how we're managing. We just had to, to pivot, all of us in the buying line. We've had to pivot and, and redirect our operations because we're still in this virtual format, but we still find a way to serve. We're all of us are service organizations. So we find a way to serve and, 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 and to make sure the community still gets the benefit of our service. So, and we've all worked together. I mean, I know two things that we've done after Alpha Alpha. Number one, uh, along with the Divine Nine, we got together, the Divine Nine organized this massive and unparalleled get out to vote effort. You know, that's, we, we claim 5 million of us together and five million actively engaged voters. We can count our families and stuff, and that's no small sum. So all of us did something in the in this movement, in this get out the vote movement. So what Alpha Cap Alpha did, we made sure we took we had a thousand lawyers from around the country to make sure that they protected the vote. You know, we partnered with the partnered with the National Bar Association, NACP, and Jerry uh, Jerry Young with the National Baptist Convention. We just we partnered with them to make sure the vote not only was it cast, but had to be protected and counted. We didn't know what to expect in this election. We still don't know what to expect right now. Mm -hmm. But so that was the first. And the second thing, specific Alpha Kappa Alpha, our HBCU initiative. We made sure we have a project, you know, being an HBCU president, I know firsthand the problems that HBCUs have, and it's so related to funding. So we we do one million dollars in one day. We raise a million dollars from the membership and a few others who throw in and help us. But we say we're gonna dedicate one day during during the month of September where we raise one million dollars in one day. They said, "What are you crazy? We can't do that." So yes, we can. So you know we go on a fast right before we do it. You know you know if you really want to empty it out and get, let God pour in and help. You go on a fast and so. We were the first day, the first time we did it, and we raised a million dollars. So, because we were starting endowments at HBCUs, because you know we we suffer sustainability is what we need, and endowments represent sustainability. So, we've already given out seventy five of these. So we do fifty to one hundred thousand dollars. The first one was Bennett, uh, Bennett College, to get one hundred thousand dollars for an endowment. We want to make sure that we we at least help HBCUs when they need it most. We do the remaining 25. We've done 75 already. We'll do 25 more this year and finish them up. So that's the importance of HBCU. So we brought attention to the whole world by HBCU. That's where we are now. This is the year of HBCU. Yeah. So and we brought that world attention because, and it shows the caliber of people who graduate from HBCU and to call attention to the contributions that have been made by HBCU graduates. Well, Kamala Harris, a Howard graduate. One of the most prominent HBCUs in the country. So, to, and it shows that that's where we are now. So, and I, I'm waiting for somebody to ask me that question again. Are HBCUs relevant? There's no way, I think people are embarrassed to ask that question now. The relevance of HBCUs, because the value add is so significant now. No one can ever raise that question again. Are HBCUs relevant? We've proven the relevancy of HBCUs. We know the worth, we know the value of HBCUs now. And so, that's this is a happy moment for HBCU students, graduates, workers, those who pay for someone to go to HBCU. These are these are all happy moments now for members of the historical black college community. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, we commend you uh, and the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority for the great work that you uh, continue to do and the wonderful partnerships that you have uh, within the community. And uh, we also uh, commend the sorority for uh, taking a part in the development and making of our bishop, Bishop Teresa Jefferson Snorton, uh, and some photos from her days uh, as a young sorority <laughs> at Vanderbilt uh, University. Uh, and if you have not heard her preach, Madam President, mm -hmm. 
You know, I Googled and heard when I, I know you did. <laughs> I was, my husband said, are you okay? I said, oh yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, I, I'm glad. To put this is amazing. This is the best and, thing that I heard. Yes, yes indeed. <laughs> and uh, Bishop, you want to say anything while we're in this Alpha Kappa Alpha moment? Bishop is really on to talk about uh, after President Smith, she and uh, President Kennedy were, were good friends. But in this Alpha Kappa Alpha moment, moment Bishop, would you like to say anything? Unmute yourself, or did I? Let's see. Let make sure. No, I I can do okay. it. Uh, right. Just want to say I'm proud to be a member of Alpha Kappa yeah. Alpha sorority. So proud of our uh, sister. Where did you dig up these pictures? <laughs> so, <laughs> so proud to, of uh, my sorority, Dr. Glenda Glover, and proud of the sorority that really does um, model excellence. And it, it's just a great day. Uh, to, to have HBCUs as well as the Divine Nine highlighted, uh, both in the mainstream media, but certainly as we uh, in the church appreciate the ways in which sisterhood and fellowship make a difference. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bishop. And Dr. Glover, thank you, my thank dear you, friend and sister. It's so good to see you. And I think I uh, may have put up Mrs. Carmen Leonard Williams' picture, yeah. uh, but I also want to uh, place uh, Lady Clarice Flake Cunningham. Yes. She's she's also another uh, AK, the wife of our late Bishop Cunningham, who's always draped in pink and green every time we see her uh, on Facebook. And so we 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 thank you and all of the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha in the CMB Church. We salute you uh, today. Thank you and thank you so much. And now. Uh, let me segue to the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. Would you just take a look at this, please? Women were getting tired. They couldn't own they couldn't land. Own land. They couldn't initiate they couldn't a initiate. divorce. There were so many things denied of women, but they wanted the vote. The Sara Mary Church Sorella the lead, the members of Delta Sigma Theta came together as an organization and marched in support of white women in their effort to get the vote, even though they would not have that same right for years to come. And so it is my honor and pleasure to present to you the president and CEO of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, the Honorable Beverly Smith, <laughs> my dear friend. <laughs> Madam President, hello. How are you, Dr. Mason? You know, I gotta get, I'm so Skip and I have known each other for a very long time, so I have to say, Dr. Mason, be very professional today. I, 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 well, you, you're very kind. You're very kind. You know, it's it's like when I go home, when I go to my mother's house, the first thing she says is, hey, Skipper. Okay, so that brings me to right where I need to be in her in her house. But I am so glad to, uh, to have you with us uh, and to, first of all, to share uh, about an amazing woman, Dr. Uh, Yvonne Kennedy, uh, who served as the 19th national president of your sorority, uh, an amazing CME woman as well. And also to talk about some of the wonderful things that you've done and been doing with your SARAs during a most interesting time period. Uh, as we discussed earlier. And, and so would you please just tell us about Dr. Kennedy's work uh, as president of Delta Sigma Theta? Absolutely, Skip. You know, the blessing I had is that I actually worked for Dr. Kennedy. Dr. Kennedy was, uh, Yvonne was president of Delta Sigma Theta when I was executive director of Delta Sigma Theta. So we got a chance to see each other on a regular basis and work to each other <laughs> with each other during during her term. There she is. Oh my gosh. You know, she is astounding. I, I have to admit, I don't know how she did it all. She was not only the national president for Delta Sigma Theta, but at the same time, she was the president of Bishop State College and she was a member of the House of Representatives in Alabama. I mean, she, this woman did it all. Uh, you know, she was always 
stately. Uh, for those of you who knew her, she always commanded attention. Uh, she was always at the forefront of things. I have to tell you, I went back and looked at some of the notes we had in terms of what she did. And I found something that uh, Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie said, and I, I think it just epitomizes her. She had a swag. She could walk into a room and command it in a matter of seconds. And she absolutely could. Uh, you know, and, and when you talk about uh, Yvonne Kennedy, uh, I looked up the, I went to your website for the CME church and I saw something there. The theme on the website said, getting back to basics as we envision our way forward, taking care of God's business. Uh, that theme that the CME church truly is the same theme that Yvonne had and lived during her lifetime uh, with us. She, she died in 2012. We were, got a chance to be at the uh, funeral. I have to, I have to tell you, it was in a convention center with 3000 people and a parade and a marching band. I have never, ever been to a funeral like that, but it was incredibly impressive to me. But, you know, during her time, she really did go back to basics in terms of what she did. She renovated our headquarters operation when I was executive director. She renovated that building, uh, tore it apart from the bottom up and rebuilt it. Uh, had Delta Shares did a capital improvement campaign during the time she was in. She did the first major reclamation that we did in Delta Sigma Theta. And again, back to basics in terms of what we did. She worked with a program called School America. And I will never forget the program because we got involved with the Bush family. And I can remember going to the White House at a luncheon with Barbara Bush uh, at the request of Dr. Kennedy. Uh, we really combined together with them and the Kellogg administration. Education, obviously, was extremely important to her, but she wanted to make sure that we were focused on literacy, focused on School America in terms of what we needed to do. Uh, she was, she had a Hugo Disaster Relief Fund. She was the first, we now have Emergency Response Fund that Delta uses, but she began that, again, back to basics of the need for people. Um, she valued education, as I mentioned. She received actually an NAACP Image Award for the contributions Delta made to the arts. She was an outstanding, as you can see by the trophy that she received there, leader. She was uh, a great president at Bishop State College. She was in the Alabama legislature for decades and did an incredible job. Um, I, you know, I can't say enough about the kind of person she was and the opportunity. She was Miss, Miss Alabama State. Yes, I see her picture there uh, in terms of what she did, but she was a leader an activist, an educator, and she passionately served the community she was in, the state of Alabama, and the sorority. Um, and I was blessed to really have the opportunity to work with her. So I, I'm so glad that you all are acknowledging these outstanding Greek women who were a part of the CME Church and shared leadership in their organization. So many times we hear Members of the sorority sometimes say that, you know, their pastors or their churches will tell them that they can't worship two people. It's an issue we have with renouncement. They can't worship uh, sorority and God. We don't worship our sororities. Our, our intent, I think all of us would say, is we are all very focused on our Christian faith uh, and make sure that we do all we can to understand who our God is and whose we belong to. And that partnership between the churches and the sororities is a very strong one. So thank you for the opportunity to get a chance uh, to talk about um, our beloved uh, Yvonne Kennedy. Thank you, President Smith. Now, take a few moments and tell us about Delta Sigma Theta under your administration and all of the things that you all have been doing, great things you've been doing in spite of a president and in spite of a hurricane and in spite of a COVID-19. <laughs> I will. I can't, I can't believe you told people that I said, I hate I served when Trump did, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that think was, you're alone in that category. Was between us. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I was between us, but what I will say, you know, it, and I think for all of us um, coming in at a time when society faced such difficulty. And there we are with our members of Congress. Uh, social action had to be at the forefront. And you know, that is one of those things. Where did you find these pictures? I'm gonna be like the Bishop. Uh, it's one of the things that we really do focus on. And there we are with Keisha Lance Bottom. Uh, and I was acknowledged, uh, there she is, a fantastic mayor. 
Uh, and I, I am pleased to say that uh, the General Assembly still chose to consider me an outstanding citizen of Georgia, uh, even though we had the issues that we've had recently. But I, um, we have worked very diligently. We've tried to work very hard in this COVID environment. Uh, we try not to skip a beat because I think that was important for the sororities and folks to understand where we were and what we're about. Uh, we tried to make sure we maintained our memberships activities. Uh, we still do membership intake. We have a virtual process with complete with animations. We did seven regional conferences last summer for 23,000 SOARs, which is not something you ever wanna do. I think I did mention to you earlier, Zoom is now a four letter word. It keeps us so very busy. Um, we got engaged in drive-bys and it's funny because I mentioned the other day, I hadn't thought about it. I think COVID in this environment has given us another meeting for drive-bys. We have done drive-by voter registration, uh, worked on voter suppression. We have done drive-by community service. Uh, we did membership intake by dropping our pyramids. Their uh, needs for membership intake drive-by on their front doorsteps. Uh, I think this COVID environment has, a, has forced us to do what black people always do. And that's be innovative and inventive in terms of what we do. Uh, the best in us comes out in crisis when you look at people of color. I would uh, uh, piggyback on what Dr. Glover said, the fact that all the Divine Nine organizations and the black women's organizations under her leadership and direction came together to make sure we did what we needed to do in this environment was incredible. I'm not so sure had we not faced the crisis we were in, that we actually would have come together like we did. But I think the friendship, and I see uh, my friend Grand Vals or uh, Hollingsworth Baker has joined us. I don't know that the four of us, the four sororities, would have developed the kind of relationship and the five fraternities that we had, had it not been for the crisis that this country faced that we felt we had to do strength with. So what did COVID do for us? It forced us to come out of our boxes. Yes, it, forced it did. Us to be innovative and inventive. It forced us to make sure our community showed the strength that only African American communities have. And as uh, Brother Greg Lewis in Atlanta, the lay leader for Georgia, said, it forced the church to come out of the building as well. There you go. Uh, and That's so right. we certainly are in agreement right. with that. But we thank you. So good to to see Madam President Valerie Hollinsworth Baker joining us, Bishop. Jefferson Snorton, in that same light as we continue uh, to share on uh, President Yvonne Kennedy, Dr. Yvonne Kennedy, would you just share with us about her as a staunch member of Stewart Memorial, Stewart Chapel CME Church uh, and her activity in the CME Church? As, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Mason, what an honor. As Dr. Smith has said, uh, Dr. Yvonne Kennedy was an amazing woman. She, uh, all the things that she accomplished in her sorority, uh, as president of a, of a historically black college, and as a Alabama state legislature are amazing. But in the midst of that, she did not neglect her church and her faith. As you said, she was a real active member at the Stewart Memorial CME Church, a lifelong member there in Mobile, Alabama. And not only was she active in the local church, served a missionary and a lay leader and a Sunday school teacher and Christian educator, but she also held those same roles and had the same impact in our district and, and in the region and really throughout the Connectional Church. She was a strong advocate, advocate for Christian education. She believed in Sunday school and Bible study, and she didn't talk about it, but she would teach she would literally sometimes she would even preach. Uh, she was active as a missionary because she really believed in community service. And her, her faith was so evident in the kinds of bills that she sponsored. Uh, she was always looking out for the least and the lost. Uh, some of the things that she advocated for were um, improved education curriculum uh, as a state legislator, as well as appropriate aid for people who had been victims of natural disasters like uh, hurricanes and tornadoes. A lot of happened in the um, uh, arena of uh, government 
to provide assistance was the direct result here in the state of Alabama of her efforts to make sure that people who were suffering and people who were on the margins and people who were oppressed were not forgotten about. She was just an amazing, amazing woman. Uh, she was a lay leader. She uh, was a local lay leader, lay leader at the regional level. And a lay nationally. And one of the ways in which her um, impact on the lay organization of our church has been embodied was with the renaming of a scholarship. There was a scholarship in our church called the uh, Graham Webb Scholarship, named after two men who were leaders. But after her death, the lay organization renamed that scholarship because they knew that she had promoted that scholarship. She believed in the scholarship and she was worthy of now the scholarship being called the Graham Webb Kennedy Scholarship. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. Last, I was privileged to uh, serve with her for a few years uh, on the board of trustees at Miles College, and she was a powerhouse. She really understood the ins and outs and the intricacies of uh, running a college, a historically black college, and she was a, a resource. When she died, it was a tremendous loss to the board of trustees at Miles College. Uh, personally, she was just a friend. She encouraged me. She supported me. As a matter of fact, I give her credit for uh, me ultimately deciding to offer myself for bishop. In 2006, after our uh, elections of bishops at the General Conference, where she was always a delegate, she served on major committees because she was a powerful woman of influence, but you could count on her to get things done. So at the 2006 General Conference, after uh, the election of Bishop Thomas Brown Bishop Carter, uh, she got up and congratulated them and you know, made the appropriate speech that she ended with saying, and I hope this is the last time we only elect male bishops. I heard that I, and I experienced something in my being when she said that. I agreed with her at the moment. I did not have any intention. Of it, of it being me, but encouragement and the encouragement of several others like her. And I can tell you at the 2010 General Conference, Dr. Yvonne Kennedy had my back. She worked the room. Uh, she encouraged people. She supported me. She had a reception, invited key people to come. She was, when she believed in something, uh, and, and I, from that moment on, I knew that everything that I did. And when I became her bishop, I wanted to make her proud because Dr. Yvonne Kennedy was one of those amazing women that only comes by every once in a while. But if you know her, it truly is a blessing. And uh, I can still say to this day, I miss her terribly. There are times when I would like to just ask her thoughts on something. Uh, I try to uh, conjure up her spirit because she was just such a wise, wise woman who literally poured herself out for her community, for her church. Yes, she did. And the city of Mobile honored her. Take a moment. And so today we honor and remember uh, a great leader in the church uh, and the 17th, uh, the 19th national president of Delta Sigma Theta sorority, Dr. Yvonne Kennedy. President Beverly Smith, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us today. We appreciate it. Uh, Bishop Jefferson Snowden, as always, thank you. Uh, as I said, Bishop Jefferson Snowden has probably been the most frequent guest that I've had uh, since I started this just a little over a year ago, but I'm so glad that she consented to come uh, and to share with us on today. And we are delighted now that the third person within the CME church to serve as a national president, Mrs. Evelyn Hood, who is also my member, I'm her pastor. Uh, at the West Mitchell Street CME Church is a bona fide member of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority. Take a look. 
Since 1922, Sigma Gamma Rho has worked to enhance the quality of life in the community. The sorority was born from the needs of seven school teachers to create a network of women working to impact the black community through education. Over the years, the sisterhood has grown to include women from all professions and from all ethnicities. The 500 alumni and undergraduate chapters of Sigma Gamma Rho throughout the United States, the Caribbean, Europe, and Asia continue to support children, teens, and families through our national programs and initiatives. I am so delighted today to have with us the, um, I guess the newly installed, uh, the newest member of the Divine Nine uh, Presidents, at least the sororities, uh, Sister Rashida Liberty. Uh, and I think you, you mentioned you were installed last year as a national president. I came in virtually August 1st was my first day. Wow, bless you. Well, welcome. We are so glad uh, to have you and that you would take some time to share a little bit about the amazing work of uh, Dr. Evelyn Hood, our beloved member, uh, who is watching in Atlanta from her home. Uh, tell us a little bit about Dr. Hood, and then I'll have you tell us a little bit about what's going on with the great Sigma Gamma Rho sorority as you all plan your centennial celebration. Yeah, so it gives me great pleasure to recognize our fourth leader. And what I love most is that she's a leader that has personally groomed me um, as a leader. So she is a Georgia peach, born in Macon, Georgia, went to Payne College. Served when she has served as youth advisor, director in Christian education, and still proudly serves as a steward. Um, she has been just a phenomenal woman. And I want to say something more personal on her. I read a quote that she wrote. She said, my mom wanted me to be a nurse. My grandmother wanted me to be a secretary. And my grandfather wanted me to be a minister. Well, she served in all those capacities as a second grade educator for over 40 years. So she says she has worn all of those hats. And of course, being a great leader in Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated, a very close friend of our Philo affiliates who has really helped get them off the ground and they still honor her to this day. She wanted to provide a way for women who didn't go to college to still affiliate with the organization as an affiliate member. So our Philo affiliates are something that is near and dear to her heart. She was the first to also establish our relationships and sustainable partnerships with the UNCF, UNCF as well as the NAACP. And so we still keep those going. She is a, um, there's so many roles that you serve as you go up the ranks in the organization, but she is a heart and soul of Atlanta is what we call it, Ala Sigma chapter. They are one of the largest chapters in our sisterhood and we honor them. And she's been a proud member of Ala Sigma chapter for many years and then climbed up the ranks and really became a regional director, which I'm proud to say I followed in her footsteps and became a regional director as well in the sophisticated Southeastern region and then made her way to become national president of the sisterhood. And as national president, she is known for establishing the National Education Fund, which is a huge arm of our sisterhood that will go on record to give over a million scholarships. So she is really a phenomenal leader, a phenomenal woman and a great mentor, someone who has always pulled my coattails and told me, she calls me Rashida too, Dr. Mason. So. <laughs> She doesn't call me Grant. She didn't call me Grant Bass was a regional director, but she called me by my first name to let me know I got a full coattail sometime. But she has just been a wonderful mentor, friend, and um, definitely honored and beloved in Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. Wow, thank you. What a what a beautiful tribute. Uh, and and she she not only pulls your coattail, she pulls the pastor's coattail. Uh, she <laughs> is that that voice. Uh, but so soothing, so calm, loves the sorority, loves God, loves the church. So tell us, what have you been doing uh, yeah. as the, the international grand basilisk, uh in this eight, virtual age? <laughs> yeah, it, it's nothing like I would have imagined. And I, I, I echo something that I know Valerie Hallinsworth Baker stated. 
she asked, uh, coming off of their Centennial for Zeta, she said, I never wanted, I never aspired to be the Centennial Grand Basses. I just, I became the Grand Basses at a time when the Centennial event was held. And so everything in my administration as I went, as I'm going forward is yes, planning the event and that celebratory moment in our sisterhood, but I am about sustainable. Well, it looks like she's frozen, at least on my screen. And of course, that happens. Maybe she'll come back in in just a second. Let's see. Uh -oh. There Did you I go. You? Did I lose yeah. you? Yes, we. but you're back with us now. Okay, I'm not sure what that was about. But I did want to say that during this term, I have really been committed to not only planning the event of the Centennial, but really looking towards what set that I bring to the organization, being in corporate America for over 30 years, of really signing some significant partners and bringing them to the table to help us with some capital campaigns. Our largest one being seven schools that we will be that we will announce in 2022. We have already built four of those schools. So we will have seven of those schools committed and we will we are proudly marching towards $2.2 million in philanthropy in the year of 2022 and over a million service hours committed through our organization. So that's what my focus is on. And of course, like all of my Divine Nine sisters have stated, we are always committed to what social action agendas that we can get behind. It started with election season. It started with Georgia, then it went into the Georgia uh, Senate race and making sure we got voters out. We were successful at doing that. And now we are really focused on how do we eradicate COVID-19 in the best yes. way. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well. President uh, Liberty, and what a very interesting name, by the <laughs> way. Is, is there a history tied to that name? Yes, I always say that when people tell me your name is so cool, I say, well, there was a great man attached to it, Mr. Gregory Liberty, proud member of Phi Beta Sigma fraternity, but his family are the Liberties and they were in Louisiana. And so okay. they named themselves Liberty as a sign of freedom. Wow. So here I, I am. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Well, we are grateful to you for spending some time with us. We congratulate you uh, as you lead uh, Sigma Gamma Rho sorority. And yes, West Mitchell Street has AKAs and Deltas and Zetas, but my God, there's a Sigma Gamma Rho in every corner, <laughs> on every pew uh, in the church. Uh, and we are grateful uh, for that, and we absolutely love uh, and adore uh, Sister Evelyn Hood, uh, mm -hmm. and I could not be more prouder uh, than to be her pastor uh, in this this season. And we thank you for uh, sharing uh, with us for these few moments. Uh, the city mm -hmm. of Atlanta honored her. She has been recognized and honored many times, but um, I was glad to stand with her in City Hall chambers. Uh, as she was recognized. And uh, we just uh, look forward to your centennial celebration and hoping that all of you will be able to uh, to get together uh, very soon. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Oh Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're going to uh, share uh, with the ladies of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority uh, and one of our own CMEs who is so well known in our church, Mrs. Evelyn Jury Brown, uh, a graduate of Morris Brown College, uh, had the uh, foresight and God blessed her to lead her chapter in creating one of the major national projects, not only of Zeta Phi Beta, but of African-American women, uh, the Storch Nest Project. But before I bring the president on, please take a look. January 16th, 1920, Zeta Phi Beta began as an idea conceived by five co-eds at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Arizona Cleaver, Myrtle Tyler, Viola Tyler, Fanny Petty, and Pearl Neal. These five women, also known as our Five Pearls, dared to depart from the traditional coalition for black women and sought to establish a new organization predicated on the precepts of scholarship, service, sisterly love and finer womanhood. It is just a delight to have the Centennial President, 
of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, the Honorable Valerie Hollinsworth Baker, who has been to two or three events within the hour since we have been on the air. But I am so glad that she could stop by uh, and share with us a little bit about her Sarah Evelyn Brown, uh, our beloved CME member, and also to bring us up to date and tell us what Zetas have been doing uh, during this uh, very interesting time. President uh, Hollinsworth Baker, welcome. Uh, glad to have you on. Would you please share a little bit about Sister Evelyn Brown? And you can unmute yourself or let me make sure I don't have you muted. Gotcha. There you go. Okay. Well, good afternoon, Dr. Mason. And thank you so very much for inviting me. And I'm glad that I was able to, to make it today. And I, I want to just say about my soror, uh, a little a little history about how special she is to our organization. You see, back in 1969, that's where it really all began. Uh, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated a relationship with the March of Dimes, and that was because of Evelyn Brown, who with her chapter, Epsilon Zeta chapter, uh, which is one of the chapters there in Atlanta, answered the call of the local March of Dimes Foundation to participate in a service project called at the time, Better Infant Births. So Evelyn's chapter opened this shop in the spring of 1971 to provide infant clothing for socioeconomically disadvantaged pregnant women who attended these prenatal classes. And later on, the chapter named this project Stork's Nest. And the sorority adopted it nationally as a signature program in 72, 1972, and became a cooperative project with the March of Dimes. So we've been a partner, a national partner with a national organization, March of Dimes, uh, for 49 years and looking to go into our 50th year. Uh, we, we know that we would not have been where we are had it not been for Evelyn Brown. She was a woman you could look up to. She was a mover and shaker. She got things done. Her chapter was always on the move. She was a, conf a confidant to several of the past grands. She was, I've, I even had the pleasure of working with her when I, well, back in the late 90s when the uh, national convention came to Atlanta and she was the marshal. And I just, just looked at her just running from pillar to post pulling in uh, sponsorships, uh, uh, program uh, participants, uh, the everyone that was needed to make that convention a success. And she, as I said, one of the nicest, nicest persons you would ever meet. And she embodies our principles, the principles of scholarship, service, sisterhood, and truly finer womanhood, because that is what we see in Evelyn Brown, finer womanhood. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. And, and we appreciate that, that history uh, of the organization and uh, the wonderful relationship that you all have with March of Dimes. And we, and we know how friendly, competitive it, it can be. I, I remember when I was the general president of Alpha Phi Alpha, you know, uh, the, the Zetas would always give us a run with the, the March of Dimes in terms of, you know, events and activities, but it was all for a good cause, you know, and I think that's what has been so unique and special about all of the Divine Nine organizations that we may be a little competitive sometime, but when it comes down to serving mankind and womankind, we are all working towards the same cause. Tell us, uh, Madam President, you, you, you're the centennial president. Uh, and uh, let, let me see it. Let me share this. And, and then I'll ask you to, to come back and uh, share a little bit about what you've been doing. Zetas throughout the world continue to celebrate the legacy of our five triumphant pearls, making history in the areas of politics, entertainment, healthcare, journalism, 
military, entrepreneurship, and so much more. Sadly, after a magical and historic Centennial Founders Weekend celebration in Washington, D.C. in January 2020, the coronavirus reached the United States and hit our organization hard, claiming the lives of Zetas, Amikai, family members, and friends, while forcing us to cancel our June celebration. Well, what a proud moment, not only for Zetas and Sigmas, but for all of the Divine Nine uh, to see you all in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Tell us, Madam President, what have you been doing and how is the sorority doing during these years of COVID-19 and the pandemic and all of that? Well, about the Macy's, it's been very difficult, I would say. Uh, I, we. We as leaders, we didn't expect this. You know, this is something that um, we just had to pivot and and try to do things differently. Everything that I had to do, I had to start and think it had to be done virtually. Uh, I, I I never stopped uh, um, our intake in terms of once we just got geared up and it took us a month to do that. We continued. We 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 continued our intake. We did that virtually. We did our induction ceremonies virtually. I would we for ten solid weeks back to back. We we did intake uh, for the inductions, uh, and I was at every single one, uh, making sure. And I think sometimes that's the difference in when we look at what's happening in COVID and what we used to do and what we're doing now. What I think now happens is that I'm able to reach the sisterhood more because when you were without COVID, you had to get on a plane, you had to get to where you got to go. You can only stretch yourself, but so thin, and you could only be at, at so many places at the same time. But with COVID and, and now having to be on Zoom or WebEx or any of the other uh, things that we have to do or be Facebook Live, we are there saying, we can do this. We can be at this a function. We could be that event. The sisterhood sees me more. The sisterhood, I can engage more with the sisterhood. We've we've still done our service projects. We we do them virtually. We have different ways in which we do them. We do them with drive by. Uh, sometimes it's just drop off. Uh, we 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 raise our funds virtually. Just this last. <clears throat> year, we raised $707,000 for the March of Dimes. Uh, and it's the largest we've ever done uh, since we have been with the March of Dimes. I mean, we're really proud of that because we believe, we believe in what the March of Dimes uh, stands for. And we, we put our money where our mouth is. And then we continue with our Storks Nest programs. And now we're doing Storks Nest virtually and reaching more uh, women that are socio disadvantaged social disadvantage, oh, boy, excuse me, socioeconomically disadvantaged uh, because we are, you know, we can touch them because we can, we can see them and we can, we can talk to them on, online and get to help them. I, what I think is most important is that we were able to come together as the, as the divine nine. And we've been, since I've been on, the, the team, uh, team divine nine, as I'd like to call it, we have been very together. We have pulled together and we're under one umbrella and we're not, we're, even though we do some of the same things uh, all of our organizations do, but see, we've pulled together as one. We've learned that our voices are um, in mass. See, we 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 have over two point five million people that we touch. But then, when you when you bring all the 
the others that come, all the auxiliaries and your families and everything, that's 5 million people. So it's our duty and our, our, our purpose to be able to get out there. And like John Lewis said, Honorable John Lewis, get into some good trouble. We have pulled together because of the politics mm -hmm. the, to make sure that what has been going on the past four years didn't have to go on for another four years. We pulled together because of the census. We now pulling together because of COVID-19, making sure that we pass the information on to our constituents and their families and their friends all over, not only the United States and the world that we mm -hmm. all have, we can touch so that they know they'll be more equipped to make a better decision for themselves and their families about what they should do if they should take this the, the, the vaccine and where they can take the vaccine and what are the uh, what could be some of the effects of the vaccine it's so important that we make sound decisions logical decisions coming from a place of knowledge mm -hmm. and that's our job that's our job as presidents of these organizations because they depend on us they see us our members look to us to say, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to, how are you going to come back? What, what can we do to bring it together? So that's what we have been doing, not only just in our organization alone with all of the, all of the things that we have done live, we are doing virtually and we're even doing more. Our membership has even increased. We are, we, we are, we've increased in new members. We've increased in reclamation. People are, because you see, they want to, they want to be, they want to belong. They want to belong to something that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. We are making sense. And I am proud to be a member of the Divine Nine and share this with my sisters here because we're a team. We're team D9. And mm. we do a good job. We're doing a great job and we support each other. And it's not about any of the different colors we wear. We're really sisters and brothers that believe that what we do, we do it for God's people. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. As we, we prepare to close, I always give each of you a chance to just make a closing remark in case there was something you didn't say or mention or want to mention. Uh, and so we'll start with you, Dr. Glover, and then uh, we'll go to President Smith and uh, President uh, Liberty, and then we'll ask our Bishop uh, to, to close us out. Dr. Glover, any, any closing thought? Well, just to say thank you. Just to say thank you once again for uh, taking this program, uh, this time of, of Women's History Month, to just to celebrate women leaders, so that the, you elevate the divine nine, you elevate HBCUs, just elevate black women. So we appreciate that. And we're just so thankful that God has allowed us to, to, to be in this moment and share this moment with you. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Glover. President Smith. I would echo the same feelings that Dr. Glover had. I do thank you for this, uh, Dr. Mason. Uh, I think it was a, a great idea to have a chance to honor these outstanding women in their relationship with the church, particularly the CME church. Uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure to be here uh, and uh, appreciate the opportunity. And always good to see my sisters and good to meet your bishop. Um, Bishop Jenkins uh, Snorton, it is wonderful to have the opportunity to meet you and to know a little bit more about your relationship with Dr. Kennedy. So thank you, thank you all. Thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Smith. Uh, President Liberty. I have to say that I love our Divine Nine Unity, number one, because I think people are really seeing the relevance and the power of the Divine Nine in such a special way. I also wanna say, we win with black women. And these women have all been phenomenal and they've been winning for a long time. And I know each and every one of us want to continue to race that they have all established. Those foundations and those footsteps have been laid for us to really plant our feet in. So I'm grateful to celebrate our 14th International Grand Basilisk, Evelyn Hood, and definitely uh, extremely um, grateful to celebrate all the wonderful women recognized today. 
phenomenal histories. Thank you. President Hollinsworth Baker. I just want to thank you and, and, and say this has been a great opportunity. I'm so happy to be here with all of you. And I, and I know that I will see you all again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bishop Jefferson Snorton. Well, Dr. Mason, thank you for allowing me to be in the company of these four phenomenal women. And I want to say to each one of them, I am so very proud of you and the work that you are doing. And I will hold you in my prayers because I know that your challenges are great, but know that God has chosen you for such a time as this. Thank you uh, also, Dr. Mason, for highlighting uh, women of the church who have made a difference through their sororities. I think it is really important uh, in this day when, when people want to fracture and divide to show the unity that goes with uh, how you live your faith. And indeed, these the women that you have highlighted today lived their faith through sorority leadership. And I would say to all of those who are watching, please use your gifts. God has given each one of you gifts and the world needs each one of you, especially to my sisters, especially to the women and girls who may be listening and a special shout out to the AKAs. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. And speaking of shout outs, I better shout out my mother who is a staunch member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated as well. So, Amama, I've done that. Um, Hi, <laughs> hello, hello me, Mom. Thank hello. you. She would appreciate that. And uh, continue to keep her in your prayers. She mm -hmm. is battling through cancer uh, courageously. Uh, and we have claimed the victory uh, in that. So just continue to lift her up in your prayers. Let me also say hello to... Uh, Reverend uh, Pastor Marvin uh, Lou, who is the pastor of Stewart Memorial in Mobile. Uh, I want to mention him, as I mentioned, Reverend Reggie Barnes, who's the pastor of um, Brown Memorial in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, someone asked me, what about this dashiki you have on? This dashiki I have on is in tribute to the sororities. I got some green in it. Uh, I have some red and a little crimson. I have some blue and some blue and white and some blue and gold. So this is my, my <laughs> tribute to you all. And I was wondering when I was gonna get to wear this uh, today. But thank you all for joining me today. I'm so blessed I, to these um, tremendous uh, ladies and leaders. Just thank God for you. Uh, for my, my old friends, Glenda and Beverly, God bless you. Thank you. Continue to fight the good fight to my new friends, Valerie and Rashida, and always to my bishop, uh, Bishop Teresa Jefferson. So, and on next Sunday before you go, let me also say before I go, and let me not forget this, that Evelyn Brown, my dear friend, is a member of Hosey Temple CME Church. Uh, it was erroneously listed, and it was my fault, as Butler Street, but she's a member of Hosey Temple oh. CME Church. So let me correct that now uh, so know. that I can rest and sleep in peace tonight. All right. That, that's what you get when you're trying to pull a program together in the in the late midnight hours. You know, all of this stuff becomes jumbled. I think on that Sunday, I'm excited about the show. We're going to be looking at four amazing women, authoring Lucy, Fanny Lou Hammer, Mamie Till Mobley, and Ruby Dara Smith, and the role that the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church had in the work that they did to advance the cause of civil rights. I am so excited about that, and I want you to join me on next Sunday, uh, good Lord willing, uh, at five o'clock. And I, I tried to find a good old church hymn to close out, but I said, you know what? My girl Whitney Houston was calling my name, and I said, let me just go ahead and close out with this. I'm every woman before uh, Facebook shuts it down. God bless you, my sisters. <laughs> Take care of yourselves. And now we salute the women of CME Church who are in the Greek letter organizations and sororities, and all of you, be blessed. Stay safe. Wear your mask, cover up, get the shot, and uh, let's live, 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 and give God the glory. Um,